Jason, I'm a respiratory therapist. So um, when I started as a respiratory therapist 20 years ago, we were quite peep phobic. Uh, traditionally, peeps were started around five, and um, it wasn't until the uh, Love Study, open lung ventilation study, that uh, occurred in 2000, where uh, they had an interventional study, uh, a traditional group with lower uh, peeps that we were used to and a uh, second uh, group that uh, had much higher peeps. Now uh, there was a low, low peep group and a high peep group within the, um, the higher peep uh, section. So there was high peep and then there's really high peep. For example, 100% uh, uh, oxygen, <laughs> I believe in the uh, high group was uh, 22. If, if not 24, I'm trying to just remember off the top of my head. Uh, and it was like a sliding scale, kind of like a diabetic. If, you're, if your sugar is this much, you give this much insulin. And the same was applied for uh, the study. If uh, you had a certain FiO2, the PEEP was automatically uh, placed. Now, uh, the results of that ended up uh, being about a 25% reduction in mortality for ARDS patients. And that is really the dawn of protective lung ventilation with lower uh, tidal volumes and higher peeps. Um, that ended up uh, around a decade later, 2010, becoming just, uh, you know, for everybody. Uh, they figured out that if this would help a damaged uh, lung with ARDS to improve mortality, that perhaps we should be doing uh, higher peeps and lower tidal volumes before we hurt them. So it went from um, harm reduction to harm prevention, basically. So um, now we're doing uh, pulmonary, uh, Palma Vistas. And with the uh, Palma Vista, we're able to set ideal peeps using electrical impedance tomography. Just so. generally, with my experience, I've never seen, um, well, I won't, I won't say never, but most of the time, surprisingly, peeps are often eight and nine optimal. The, the people that I find have sometimes, you know, peeps of six and eight that are optimal are really those um, stiff, fibrotic, non-recruitable uh, lungs where the uh, elastance is very high and, you know, the, the lung just snaps close. So, um, we also, when I, when I first uh, started, and I think this really is still the thought paradigm, is that uh, we often look at the oxygen saturation, and if they're on you know 30%, the peeps at 10, we start weaning down the peep, and we're using really strictly an oxygenation uh, aspect to decide where we're going to, to wean and when we're going to wean. Uh, and that's quite normal because initially all we had to do was rely on the general mechanics that we would do at the bedside, which doesn't really show regional distribution. However, it just shows basically uh, global values. We don't know. Uh, I mean, as you know, uh, the lung is, is often not uh, homogeneous. It's very heterogeneous. So there's certain areas that have different kind, uh, certain areas of lung that have uh, different compliance, uh, different resistance, different uh, time constants to uh, open or to splint open uh, the alveoli. Um, with the electrical impedance tomography, um, I, it has really uh, made me realize that uh, it's not only about oxygenation. We want to set the ideal peep right to the, till the end. So what I've been uh, doing now is keeping that peep optimal, uh, even if the oxygenation is quite low, um, like uh, the FI2, I mean. So they'll, it, you'll see weird stuff where it's 25% oxygen and sometimes the peep is still, you know, 12, even 13 sometimes. Uh, we have to take into account that even if the oxygenation is low, the um, 
the patient might still be able to be able to properly oxygenate with these low FIR2s, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the lung is placed in the most compliant area on the pressure uh, volume loop. So uh, what I uh, suggest, and please feel free uh, to comment, uh, if you uh, have any additional thoughts or if you agree or disagree, is that the uh, lung should be in the optimal PEEP, even though it's maybe quite high. Uh, and the logic to me seems that if it uh, looks my, maybe a little weird with a, a higher uh, PEEP, we'll be able to wean the pressure support you know, to six a lot faster. And then once we are at a pressure support of six, then after we can uh, technically uh, bring down the PEEP at the end. Now, if you have the luxury of using electrical impedance tomography, uh, you can uh, continually have bedside assessment and you can pretty much do these PEEP studies uh, as much as you want since this is a monitor and the Palma Vista 500 from Draeger is quite user friendly. It uses a belt with 16 electrodes that send um, vectors of uh, current across uh, the chest and um, measures the differences in impedance. Uh, when, when on inspiration there's an air in, a lot more air in the lung and uh, that impedes the uh, vectors trying to uh, cross the air and then on expiration there is less impedance and the tomography is uh, able to computerize uh, an image of the distribution of ventilation. Um, that being said, I uh, suggest uh, that we keep the PEEP optimal right to the, till the end if we have the luxury of actually uh, um, doing a tomography. And then after we wean the PEEP down to the end, and then after we continue with uh, the tomographies during the weaning uh, phase, especially when we're anticipating in the coming day or so to uh, extubate, um, it uh, doesn't make much sense to you know bring them down uh, on a pressure support of uh, well the pressure support of six it makes sense but the peep of six just because that's tradition of doing six over six before extubation we should uh, you know when the pressure support of six is there we should do the tomographies find the ideal peep and then inform the uh, the physician of the current optimal peep. Now, uh, again, we can look at the FiO2 requirement that's quite low, the pressure support is quite low. Often, uh, this is what we use to, to guide. We have to take into account pleural pressures, transpulmonary gradients, um, uh, you know, abdominal distension. Uh, for example, uh, we had a gentleman with ascites, so had a quite, uh, you know, uh, distended abdomen. And this is exactly one of the examples where uh, the PEEP uh, was decided to be reduced uh, based on uh, the FiO2 requirements. Um, with the tomography, at least, uh, I was able to come back with some images and some reports uh, and, and to convince uh, the physician uh, that it, it, it's best to keep the lung in an optimal uh, splinted open position. It's safer. And um, personally, I would uh, be comfortable with uh, a gentleman with a distended abdomen to have a higher higher peep um, right, right until the end. It just kind of makes sense because um, I've seen that it weans the pressure support a lot faster uh, when, when we keep the peep. So you'll get these uh, high peeps at 12 and a pressure support at, uh, at eight uh, or six, and that kind of looks odd. Uh, I suggest that uh, the Palma Vista 500 be used um, the day of exhibition or prior to the day to um, to basically wean down the pressure of uh, the peep to a lower level, which is fine. And then on extubation, what we could do is keep the uh, belt on and look at the dorsal regions and also give more information if that patient is uh, gradually de-recruiting. We, I also suggested, uh, um, and there are studies that are indicated, I'm pretty sure a lot of the areas, uh, a lot of the hospitals now just re routine, routinely use high flow nasal cannula, uh, OptiFlow, which uh, has some evidence through studies that um, it uh, can prevent the reintubations. 
Um, so I just wanted to kind of share the uh, the idea that I think we should stop as respiratory therapists looking at only at oxygenations for um, our compass to bring down the peeps. We should be uh, seeking to always optimize the uh, lung right till the end. Uh, you know, we I would I used to do basically T-piece trials where you have the ET tube, you're just putting a T-piece with, uh, and you know, you're know you challenging uh, the lung now. We all know that uh, while the ET tube is in place, um, the FRC uh, it, it, you know, needs to be basically be set. So I think that that's an archaic uh, way now of challenging the lung to see if uh, if we make it uh, dangerous in a way, in my opinion, uh, then we extubate. We, we don't challenge any uh, other lung. Uh, we, we don't do that to the kidneys. You know, we're gonna stop dialysis. Let's challenge uh, the kidneys. Let's put, uh, you know, suboptimal par parameters. Let's set that lung in an uh, uh, unsafe zone before extubation. Not only is there probably significant derecruitment that can occur, uh, they may have uh, enough of a reserve uh, to get through that challenge, but then we're we're extubating uh, in, in a suboptimal uh, area. I think that's just my opinion. Um, so I'm going to stop the video here. Just wanted to kind of share that, and uh, I hope uh, I hope more and more people start watching my channel and uh, commenting, uh, so we can have a uh, cool discussions. All right, guys, see ya.